Another massive change in the last four years has been China's growing role um, in Europe, particularly in Eastern and Southern Europe. How is that changing Europe, both its orientation in the world um, and its future? For decades, we in my country, in Germany, we tended to regard China as a market, you know, where we can sell the maximum number of Mercedes and Volkswagens and BMWs, and that was it. We have now started over the last few years to discover that <clears throat> if we want to defend our interests, we need to uh, consider not only human rights issues, we need to consider uh, intellectual property issues, we need to consider security issues, and we need to work with the United States on this. So I think that, that actually we are, on the European side, we are interested and willing to try to coordinate with the United States. There is one big obstacle for us at this moment. We don't yet really have something which deserves to be called a EU-China strategy. There is a French China strategy, there is to some extent a German strategy on China, and maybe a British and Italian uh, strategy on China. Putting this together and presenting to our American partner something which, which deserves to be called an EU approach to China and consult with the United States about you know, where is overlap, where can we work together, where, uh, how can we develop joint initiatives on so many different issues uh, in China. I think that's the, the big issue. Do you think it is more true that the United States has been too hawkish on China or that the Europeans have been too dovish on China? What's, what's your personal view? My personal view is that in, uh, as far as China is concerned, uh, I would actually give a, a, a few bonus points to the Trump administration because by adopting this rather confrontational uh, position on China, that sort of had the effect of a wake-up call in Europe. We had to scratch our heads and say, well, maybe he has a point, uh, Mr. Trump, and maybe we should think about this also in a more strategic and not only in a, in a kind of trade and, and investment uh, uh, manner. If the United States and Europe get together on this, we represent not quite... 50%, uh, but certainly way over 40% of world trade. We are um, very difficult to ignore, even by China. So I think this is the opportunity to, uh, to have an impact uh, in Beijing um, and, to, and to make sure that the relationship can be one um, at, uh, what's the correct word, at eye level, uh, where, where based on the principles of reciprocity. So in that sense, I think we have lots of work ahead, but I am not entirely pessimistic about the opportunity of turning the Chinese uh, issue into a positive transatlantic agenda item.